Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. good morning. good to see all your smiling faces this morning. Lord. Thank you all that came out yesterday and hung out with us while we got the new snow going. We had, had a good response from a good response from the neighborhood. I got to love on some people. I've been watching this work for a year and a half, and it's probably good for me this time. But, uh, so it was good, a good time, amen? Yeah, and if you look around this morning, I see we're missing lots of faces, so let them know that you miss them and that uh, you're praying for them wherever they may be, amen? amen. And I, but I'm glad you made it here. Yes. Did you all come to get something from God? Yes. yes. I hope so. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be really bored. <laughs> <coughs> Hopefully not. If you missed the announcements, we gave all the dates for our upcoming our baptisms. The, the 10th, uh, starting the 3rd, we're starting our basic, basic Bible doctrine class. It'll be at 2 o'clock. It'll be time to go home and get something to eat, wash your face, and come back. It'll be 2 o'clock every Sunday. And then, uh, then uh, the 14th and the 28th is our Overcomers Recovery Ministries. It's a Thursday night at uh, 6.30 here in the upstairs room. There's an Overcomers Recovery Ministry room up there. And uh, it'll go every other Thursday after that for now. And uh, the Lord, not if, just the Lord brings other people on board. We'll probably pick that pace up. But for right now, I'm pacing myself. So, uh, it's going to be a good time. Amen? Amen? Does anybody remember what we talked about last Sunday? Yeah. The four Ds. The four Ds? Yes, the four Ds. Four Ds. Lead me not in temptation. And how it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Has anybody had any time to meditate upon that this week? And have you found where there were some little foxes sneaking in? Yeah. I found that, he, that the enemy, you know, he, he even does it on Sunday mornings. Years ago, Joyce Meyer, I don't know, she's done some things here lately that I'm a little concerned about, but I grew up listening to her, and uh, she she preached a message one time that freed up this young minister. She started to start talking about how her and her husband, I don't condone this, but they... They had almost knocked down, drag out fights on the way to church, and then they try to put a smile on and go in. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the enemy he attacks ministry? If he can get them out of peace and out of sync with them, the Bible says that a husband and wife, if they're arguing, they got not even hear their prayers. <laughs> Therefore, now he's made them uh, where they're not even can't even minister the gospel. Mm -hmm. So, do you think? And how does he do that? By them small foxes, he gets them thinking on things, to arguing with one another, right? Yes. You know, he's, a, he's not above that in my house, too. He'll make sure every Sunday morning, like clockwork, he'll start showing me all the things that I've asked, talked about, or whatever else that's still not done. He'll try to irritate me nine million different ways to get my spirit man upset. And you would think, after 25 years, I would catch on to what he's up to. But each time, I have to take those thoughts captive. Because, see, he doesn't always come with false stuff. It gets you wound up about the true stuff, but how you respond to that is what matters. Amen. The Bible said, out of the moment, it's the heart for my speech. You know, I, I've said it for a long time. If you want to really know what somebody thinks about you, just sit around and listen for long enough, they'll eventually tell you. Big smile. Come on. Say, so what's that got to do? Because. The enemy doesn't really care how he leads you away as long as he gets you away. Yes, yeah. that's right. Now, we talked about how we always, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, you, you know, if you've came from backgrounds like, like I have, there are certain things, you know, you don't go around, you don't turn on, you don't look at, you just stay away from those type of temptations completely. But it's amazing when God spoke to me and started talking about these small foxes, these temptations that lead to those things. Do you know that nobody falls away instantly? Right. It's a slow, slippery slope when they fall away from God. You know, when I was growing up, I was scared to do anything. They, I mean, I, I, I'm thankful for the church I grew up in, but they were so strict, I didn't think I was going to graduate high school before Jesus came back. 
Now we should still be looking for him to be coming back every day, but how many know that he says, occupy until I come? I was more worried about all the religious stuff than I was about taking kingdom ground. Come on. Now they meant well, and we still need to preach those things again. Everybody's taking those things out. It's not that you don't need to preach them, but you need to preach them from the right heart. The Bible says every issue of life flows out of your heart. If you've got an issue, guess where it started? In your heart. And guess what? Guess who's trying to lead your heart astray? Satan. How do you do that with temptations? Does anybody was anybody here tempted to get aggravated today? Some of you can be aggravated right now. You can say, it's, it's so cold in here today. I don't know why. It's keep it so cold. What the weather turns on? And you can get frustrated. I think he's making money about the weather change. Yeah. Now, uh, you never know. It, it's possible. But, yeah. But, you know, there's all, how many knows there's always something to irritate you? You never seem to have a lack of things that irritate you. What if I told you told you that most of that is just fiery darts from the devil, twenty four seven, trying to get you to take to bite the bullet? I believe it. Because when you get frustrated, it starts taking you out of sync with God. Amen. <laughs> Come on, I, listen, I didn't say you were in sin. I'm not up here. I'm trying to say it starts taking you out of the sink with God. Amen. Philippians 4 8 says, Think on these things, whether these are lovely, whether these are pure, whether these are just, or be any virtue, to be any praise. Think on these things. And I've spent the last 20 some years trying to train myself to think on those things. And do you know what? I still end up frustrated sometimes. Do you know that the enemy will use your good, godly attributes against you? A man that is full of integrity and stewardship. He knows that when things are not in order, then it drives him crazy. So then he will make sure that he notices everywhere that things aren't in order and people are doing things sloppy. And what's he trying to do? He's trying to lead them away into temptation to be angry with this person. And the Bible says reunity is God commands a blessing. And now he's broke unity and now he's come in and making a mess. All because of that man's godly attributes, the gifts that God had given him. You see how quickly that went? I saw you're smiling. You're realizing, hey, he's talking about me. <laughs> Some of you are are married. <laughs> you're just praising the Lord, and everyone's going, "Would you pick up a broom and help every once in a while?" I'm so glad you know how to worship. Just wish you knew how to help do the work. And then we make sure you notice every time when they're not doing their part. So you think. I'm preaching this morning. Are you, are you, we're we're going to talk about uh, Matthew chapter 60. We're going to talk about being led. You know the enemy can't do anything without your permission and God's permission. That's why he tries to lead you astray. He can't make you go astray. And every bit of it starts in your heart. How you respond to things. Come on. Now, is, everybody, is anybody going to get this perfect note? But to the day Jesus comes back, we can try. Wouldn't it be nice to start shutting some doors so you didn't have to work every day through getting your peace back? I don't like it when I get upset. Do you want to know why? Because I start losing the peace of God in my heart. How about that for honesty? But I would be lying if I told you that I found a way to never be upset again. <laughs> But I can tell you over the last uh, several years, God's been really fine-tuning me because he took a guy full of stewardship, integrity, and he was able to do all those things even if nobody else was. And then I got stuck in a chair where I had to wait for everybody else to help me and they got to do it their way and I had to sit there like it. And learn to be patient. And love them and be thankful for what they were doing. And then whenever, you know, and then in the world would say, well, he don't feel good. He's got a right to be a little cranky. You know, there's not, well, that scripture is not in the Bible. Right. It don't matter how much pain you're in, what you're going through. There's never a time that's anointed to be cranky. <laughs> that's like when I got in trouble with all the redheads. And I said, redheads not a license to be angry. You didn't know. I was going to be angry and sin not. <laughs> I use it 
thought I was leading somebody. But how does he do all those things? He leads you away. There's things you start fighting that he tempts you with. I just listed a lot of them this morning. You say, didn't you preach on this last week? Yeah, but I'm focusing on the being led part. The Bible says, out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks, right? So this morning, you let the scripture lead you to church. Where hopefully you've started to receive something today. Hopefully. But you let it lead you here. Was anybody tempted to stay in bed today? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody think, oh, just one service won't hurt? Maybe I'll watch it. Oh. I don't really feel like going, Lord. You said wherever, your opinion's in me, so wherever I'm at, you're there. Come on, everybody in the room has been tempted, right? Everybody's been tempted. So what kept you from giving in to temptation? The Word of God in you, praying, being filled with the Holy Ghost. The thing that you realize that it, I wrote this this morning, I want to read it to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everybody really likes that verse. They like the added unto you part. But what did you have to do first? Seek first the kingdom of God. Did you know that's every day when you get up, you seek what God wants? Well, I got a job to do. Yeah, he puts you in that job for a reason, on purpose. And everything you do is for his purpose. Where your treasure is, there is your heart also. My treasure is with the Father. So wherever he is, I want to be about my Father's business. So coming to the house of God is where my heart is. That's where my treasure is. What matters to you? You can tell everybody else and tell yourself what matters, but how many know the proofs in the pudding? And then it goes on, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You're gonna whatever you're gonna say things. Now you, when you're out, when you're away from the here, the church, you're away from me, and your co-workers start yapping and gossiping and backbiting. Boy, it don't just hurt. I, I, I like to know what happened in that situation. Yeah. It's really been bothering me now. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to go listen. And when somebody else asks you, oh yeah, I'm going to tell you what I heard. You have just now partake, whether you know it or not, of backbiting and gossiping yourself. And now you're bringing yourself out of unity with God. And now you're letting the enemy start to lead you astray. And so now all those other things that are attached to it, where everybody else ain't had no peace and you've had peace about it at the work, are now going to start bothering you. And all of a sudden, you're going to start uh, being all tore up inside all over you. Do you see how that works? Big smile. I know it's deep stuff. Do not forsake the same of yourself together as you see some do as the day gets closer to Jesus' return. How I many know where his, his return is coming back? And we've never seen, we, we, we're seeing a great falling away. When the pandemic happened, the Lord spoke, we've been doing online services for 15 years and we're on TV and all that stuff. And those are all great things for people. But the Lord spoke to me and he said, they're all going to think it's great that they're reaching so many people when they start doing stuff on TV. He said, but they're not going to be so easy to get back into the church because we're going to come disconnected. And well, and I'm not beating people up. I'm not saying you didn't have to use wisdom. I'm not saying that things weren't there. But if I got to tell you that God can help you overcome drugs and alcohol and cancer, and then I tell you, the Bible says, call for the elder church and one rule and pray the prayer of faith. Oh, but yeah, but don't come to church. God's not big enough for that. No. I'm not going to beat you whether you come or don't come, but I should be here when you need me. Amen. Amen. And that's how I did the whole the whole pandemic, so that everybody knew where to find Pastor Brian. I wasn't hard to find. I was in the house of God on the days that I was supposed to be there. Amen. Whether or not you came or didn't come, I love you just the same and pray for you. Yes. But now we see, so we didn't experience that great falling away as much as some, because guess what? We just kept doing what we'd always done. And guess what? God took care of every single one of us. Amen. Now, some people got affected by it. And the devil tried to kill Sister Deb. The, the doctors told her she was done and everything else. We fasted and prayed at the church. Guess what? She don't look dead to me today. Amen. 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 
Come on, are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. But the whole, the, the lots of people were led astray. It started very simple, but guess what? It's hard to reconnect once you're away from the flame. I know, I, I say, when I preached last Sunday, you don't like it, come back next week. I'll be different. Maybe I'll be boring. I'm doing more teaching and preaching today. So, do you ever watch a fire and you get the coals hot? You can put anything in there and it'll ignite. But when you separate them, before long, there's no fire at all. That's the same with the body of Christ. That's why he says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Y'all still with me? Amen. Amen. The Bible says you will find him when you seek him with all your heart. Do you know that most people, I, I still get, I get asked all kinds of stuff all over the world. That people want me to help solve things. You know, the main issue I found is people go to church looking to see what the church can do for them instead of what they can do for the church. They go church shopping like they go shopping for a new car. Listen, I ain't never once decided I wanted to pick the hardest personal trainer to get me in shape, but I mean, God probably knows that's probably what I need. So if I pick what I want, I won't be over at Disneyland somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to pick the trainer guy. Although my daddy God knows I need the trainer guy. I'm not calling myself the trainer. You all, I didn't say that. <laughs> Big smile. Tim, are, are you hearing me this morning? See, the world, the, we, we don't seek God. We seek what God can do for us. And if you don't want to be led in a way into temptation, that is one of the first places you need to change your heart. Is learning to seek God instead of what God can use. When people call up to ask to come to the church, say, well, the first thing they ask, well, you got a youth program. Mm -hmm. You got a children. Oh, yeah. Well, all these things, they want to know, what are you going to do for me? Sometimes I want to add, I want to add a disciple checklist to them and say, well, what are you going to do for God? We don't know if we want to take you. <laughs> Hold on. I don't. We take everybody for the record. And we don't have put out no checklists. And, and we're happy to have anybody that comes. But do you see the, the irony of it? And when you ask yourself. And the only way you change. Is by changing your heart. Lord what can I do for you today? Lord what do you want me to do today? If you don't want to be led away. In temptations or frustration disappointment, discouragement, doubt, you need to learn to start being led into the things of God. Amen. You can only serve one master. Amen. Amen. So if you'll spend your time being led deeper into the things of God, you won't have to worry about being so led astray, but you still will be tempted every day. Amen. But that's why he said pray that you don't fall to these things. Pray that you learn to recognize these things. Come on. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you, after you, after you started praying, after I prayed, I've been doing a bunch of this for years, but after I honestly started praying, Lord, uh, lead me not into temptation, I started recognizing just sometimes how many triggers I had on certain subjects. And sometimes I wasn't catching them until they'd done brought fruit in other areas. Come on, honey, hang with me. I had I had been I've been catching them, but only when after they bore fruit over here and something else. And now I've started learning. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because we're taught well. Praise God, if you're a spirit-filled believer, you're full. You don't ever get depressed. Well, you're right. God is bigger than depression. He delivers from those things. He fills you full of joy, but you're still not above the temptation to be depressed. And there's physical attributes the enemy constantly tries to uh, trip you up and, and trip you up with. And so maybe you don't bite the bullet and get de depressed, but then you get the next best thing to it for Satan, you get discouraged. Then if you stay there long enough, guess what it leads to? Depression. Now, is anybody above being discouraged? No, but the Bible says you have to encourage yourself. But once again, people went shopping for church, so they're looking, who's going to encourage me the most? 
I, I need the church to encourage me. Oh. Lord, send someone along to encourage me. The next thing you know, you're getting berated at the drive through Lord, I just want someone to encourage me. It's like, I gave you the Holy Ghost. I gave you the Comforter. I need you to start encouraging yourself. Would you come on with it already? I gave you every tool you got, every tool you need. But I just don't feel like it today. You know, people come in. Uh, I want to get. I worked in the lead mines, and it's L E A D, not L E D. And lead is heavy. People always coming in telling me, "Well, actually, they ain't done it in a long time. Y'all are getting real good." People used to come in and tell me, "Pastor, I'm feeling lead to do this, and I just want to. I want to take that piece of lead out." And say, "Yeah, me too. I'm feeling lead also." <laughs> Because most of the time, it's not led by God at all. Are you still there? <laughs> Amen. Now, to our key verse today, all that was free. Let me get a drink of water. I got 35 minutes, and my, my clock starts now, right? <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. So, the enemy would love to lead you away into something. How many in here? Oh, man. I don't want to talk about that one. You know, one of the biggest things that gets people to lose their peace in this world, right, right that's been over what happened in the last eight years, ten years, just start talking about politics. People's heads start spinning. Now listen, I love America. I'm a patriot. I don't want to give up certain things. I've been to communist countries. I've been over those places. I know what our freedoms are. Please don't mistake me. But if the enemy knows he can get you to lose your peace over that, guess what happens? Hey, hey, listen, if you're being honest, I believe there's people in here that once you've started, you, you go down that rabbit hole, you find yourself in a place away from peace and realize that you need God to recharge your battery. Amen. Yeah. Now, the enemy's pretty slick, isn't it? Now, listen, I'm not saying you can't be a patriot. Please hear my heart this morning. But have you once talked to anybody in the last eight years about politics that, was, that you went away feeling refreshed? <laughs> and I'm not saying you can't talk about politics. Please hear my heart. I am trying to expose some things that the enemy's been using to tear down our country and us as believers. Are, are you still with me? Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. There is evil in this world that the enemy wants to manifest. And so if he can't get you to do it, he at least wants you to be distracted with something else so that you're not speaking up about the things he wants you to speak up about. Amen? So, anybody in here have road rage? Don't raise your hands. Now, do you know I've seen, for me, Road rage used to be, and listen, I had, I had to get delivered from it. I'm just going to tell you. It's been a long time ago that I, I, but God delivered me. But it was a community, it was an accumulation of every other frustration I had going on in my life. And when they would, someone would do something like that, then they got to be the, the they got to be the key person that I put all my frustrations on. Now, I don't know what else is going to admit that, but that's what it was, was for me at that time. And to the Lord, to you know how God got me? Because listen, he doesn't use kid gloves on me. I'm just going to tell you. He said, that's one of my kids. What do you think their day is like? Why do you think they're acting the way they're acting? You know why you're acting that way. But what do you think they're going through right now that's causing them to be a jerk? He said, I died for them the same way I died for you. And so when I started thinking about the word of God, do you see how that changed my persona, my, my what I was how I was dealing with this temptation to blow up on this person. Man, he messed me up for good. I was never able to have a good road rage after that. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I 
Because I, I started seeing people for who they were. And then he started talking about deeper things. He's like, this ain't about the road rage. This is about your disappointment, your discouragement, those four Ds, all that stuff that's going on in your life that you're trying to bury and not deal with or get healed up or, get, or bring to me so that we can sort it out. And a lot of times it's because you Christians were taught to bury stuff instead of get healed of stuff. Big smile. And then what happens? The enemy starts leading you away. And then you get maybe you've fallen into some bigger stuff. Maybe you've fallen back into you know, some of those big things you talked about. Drinking, drugs, alcohol, sex, all those other things. But I can promise you, before you ever got into those things, it was the little foxes that started leading you to a point to open that doorway up to things you never would have considered. Say, well, Pastor, we're all the good kids today. We're in church. We came. We didn't go back to bed, and we're here. Praise God. Then, then you need to learn this word, lead. Listen, if it wasn't possible for him to lead you, he wouldn't have told you to pray about it. I've seen people become such super Christians, they thought they were above it. The Bible says pride goes before the fall. And what happens is so many people get so prideful, they don't realize they're being led astray even by the pride itself. And I've watched it, and it's heart-wrenching. So do you know what I had to start doing? I had to, the Bible says if you judge yourself, you won't be judged. Right? So I had to start judging myself, and you know what? I, I know we've talked about this many times, and I can talk about me, because none of y'all like about, I'll talk about you for this little bit, I don't know why. But, uh, <laughs> you know, early on, God put a strong anointing on my life, and, and, uh, Lord, touch it in Jesus' name. And so the, the Lord put a strong anointing on my life, and people would come up, and they'd be all be about what God was doing. And I learned that, you know what, it, it felt good. It feels good when people start to stroke your ego, right? So I learned early on that I, I couldn't give any way to that. So whenever somebody come up, you'll hear me say, I'm just a good donkey. Why? Because if he can use a donkey, I ain't nothing special. And it puts me in my place and closes that door of temptation. Are you with me today? Yeah. And so you need to start asking yourself and be taking inventory. What are some of the things that you know lead you away? Now, I'm not talking about the big things. If you got big things, we'll deal with it. We'll pray the anointing will break the yoke. But we need to start finding out the small foxes, those small doorways that the enemy is using to keep on bringing you around to those things. Y'all still here today? Yes. So uh, that word uh, led to lead, I'm going to read you some definitions from out of, the, out of the Greek and a few other translations to this one. I'm just going to go down through. I know it's a little different today, but somebody getting something in your spirit and then mm -hmm. is it clicking. Mm -hmm. Listen, you all, everybody has doorways. You can either open the right ones and close the wrong ones, or you can be led away. But the thing is, don't think you're above being led away if it's something he told you to pray about every day. You know, Jesus, people will use this, for the, they'll use this excuse to go hang out at bars. Well, Jesus, he hang out with public and sinners. Here's the thing, he never left them the same way, so he never had to go back again. When he left them, they were saved, and they were coming with him. He wasn't going back to them. Amen. And my, it, 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 God has sent me into bars before to get people. True story. But here was the deal. All the bar got quiet when I walked in the door. <laughs> True story. They did. The one that was I was going after, he put his, he put his head in. Oh, man, here you go. <laughs> I said, can we talk? Sure. And we talked right there on the bar stool. And then the owner came up to me and said, you're costing me a lot of money. Can you please leave Pastor Brown? <laughs> True story. <laughs> and I left. I said, sure, but you have to come talk to me on it. And he did. The other gentleman came out with me. He never went back. But if you saw my bar, my, 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 my bike down here at this bar every day when you drove by, it would not be a good witness, would it? I'm in there witnessing to them every day. No. no. When Jesus went one night, right? Why would I say that? Why am I saying that? That wouldn't be a healthy place for a guy like me to be spending time in. 
because it'd be opening up a temptation for me. Eventually. Not that God's delivered me from all those things, but are oh, you following? So if the water cooler was your gossip station, you probably ought to stay away from the, God, the water cooler and still you're strong enough to influence them and them not influence you. Amen. If you just are interested in keeping some of that peace you got. Amen. When I worked at the mines, it was never it was one of the best jobs down there. And everybody who worked there was miserable. And, and the, the company did have all kinds of stuff they did. But them guys just constantly just stirred strife and discord all day long. And they were all miserable. And it was making me miserable. And the Lord said, well, then you got to quit eating the same food they're eating. And so what that meant is I spent my breaks and my stuff reading my Bible, and then I was the only one in there, and I've told you some of the horrific stories they've done, but guess what? They have all had Bible studies now. Some of the attitude has changed there. It took a decade, but it changed. But I was, somebody had to stop eating the food they were serving. Did they like it? No. But it was a temptation for me, even as a young Young believer, I recognize that if I feed that stuff, my soul doesn't feel it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm making this really simple today, but does anybody get, uh, do you, does anybody have any loved ones that know just how to get under your skin? <laughs> I mean, they can push your buttons in 3.2 seconds, and you're like, Lord, if you don't do something with them. He said, I did, I gave you. <laughs> But in all, all honesty, if you know that's a temptation, God's not telling you to do away with them. He's just trying to, you know, you need to spend some time with me until you're affecting them and they're not affecting you. Amen. Spend some more time in prayer, more time Amen. reading the word, you know, and, about, and, and, and learn some scripture. One of the first ones I learned, that, the very first scripture I learned, and everybody thought I was smart. The Bible says even a fool keeps his, even a fool looks smart when he keeps his mouth shut. It's in Proverbs. Everybody thought I was so smart, I was really just chewing on my tongue because I had a lot of things yeah. I wanted to say. But that was my first temptation I was learning to shut down. Y'all still here today? Yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? To guide by the hand as to lead a child, it also includes a sense of drawing as well as a directing. So you're going to be led by one or two people. Either Jesus is going to lead you beside green pastures or Satan is going to lead you into temptation. But either way, you're giving that person authority over you to lead you. Amen. To guide or conduct by showing the way to the direct as Israelites were led by a pillar of cloud by day and by a pillar of fire by night. So to, to, to conduct by showing the way. To conduct to any place. To conduct as a chief or com commander applying authority to direct and govern. Uh, so, once again, who are you letting, are, who are you, it really comes down, there, there's only two people, right? Now, nobody wants to talk about this stuff, but who are you giving authority in your life? If it's a small fox who says, spoil it, the enemy doesn't care how small it is as long as you give him a place. As long as he has a place, he's going to stir discord, strife. Disunity. Mm -hmm. Has anybody in here, do you know it's impossible to stay mad and let it, you don't keep rehearsing the, what, the harm? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? You ever notice when you get mad on something, boy, the enemy just keeps firing in there, and each time he fires, makes a, a revolution in your heart and in your mind and your spirit, you get more and more frustrated about it mm -hmm. to the point that you finally just want to do something about it. <laughs> you want to say something, bless God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't get to talk to me that way. Come on. Do you know what? It doesn't matter if you never say that to that other person or that spouse. It's in your spirit. It's already poisoned your spirit. And it started leading you away. Now, I'm not telling you, you got to take everything that happens. Speak up there. You know, sin be anger and sin not. Jesus was full of every emotion. Emotions are not sin. That's another thing that that, that Satan spread into the church and that, and people just uh, it's not true. I, I preached a message on many years ago. God never told you to be an emotionless person. He taught you how to have emotions and overcome them and live like Christ even with them. Come on, sadness, mourning. They're all part of who Christ is. Angry. 
You know, people with the temper, they'll always tell you, well, Jesus flipped over the tables. Bless God. Yeah, he was doing it for his father in his father's house and angry about that. If you want to do that, there's places for it, but it's probably not aimed at the person that's sitting next to you going down the highway. Jesus is like, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Come on, are you still here? Yeah. I know it's different. To proceed, to introduce by going first. To guide, to show the method of attaining an object. Self-examination may lead us to a knowledge of ourselves. I like this next one. To draw, to entice, to allure. The love of pleasure leads men into vices which degrade and impoverish them. So many times I just see like Satan, he's like a fisherman, you know, just hanging those things in front of us, just looking for somebody to take a bite. Is it sin to do that? To induce, to prevail, or to influence. Do you know not everybody in your life is there to bring you up? The enemy will put people in your life to influence you to do the wrong things. Moving along. You know what, I know I'm preaching different today, but I, I just want to quit. The enemy really doesn't want y'all to get this. If you guys start realizing how revolutionary this is, it's going to change you forever. Tomorrow, yeah. when you wake up, you know, and your spouse ain't done the toothpaste right, and they didn't do the covers all just right all night long, and they're still there, they still, clothes are still on the floor, and they ain't cooked breakfast in 40 years, you know. <laughs> Here. You're going to remember. Lead me not into temptation. And they're going to be shocked when you smile at them. They're going to say, what is wrong with them? Why are they acting that way? And you say, well, because I got Jesus and we just be glad. You should have seen the other options. Right. <laughs> right. Amen. Good stuff. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all goodness and honesty. You can be led into a peaceful and godly and honest life. Don't that sound wonderful? But you're going to have to learn to start shutting off these little foxes that have been just overrunning the body of Christ. Listen, I, I, my hand's been up. I, I, I had to swallow all this first, and I'm still finding a, a lot more little foxes and things that I... You know, you ever ask people to do stuff 20 times and they still don't do it? Does that not frustrate you? Yes. Or, then, or, 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 or the next things they move on to, you're like, man. But if I, if I respond out of a way out of, that's not out of love, then who's going to pay the piper for that? Hey, I'm going to let them open some stuff up. I'm going to lose some peace. I'm going to lose some joy. And I ain't going to feel no better. And so the Lord, he started doing many years ago, and I'm still working. He said, Lord, he said, and hopefully the leaders and the people, members of the church are, can at least attest to this. At least I'm, not I'm trying, but uh, he said, son, you got to learn to direct out of love. And I thought, well, Lord, I've been doing it out of love. He said, no, if you're still frustrated with them, you're not doing it out of love. And love doesn't have to prove its point. They just got to state the fact. You still with me today? I know this is different. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I've learned, I've not perfected it. I still get frustrated, I have to tell you. There's times that I realize I'm not doing it just right. Or I'm going to tell you what, this morning, I've been chewing on this all week. On this morning, I had about a hundred different things that about frustrated me to no end on the way here. From the time I got up to the time I got here this morning, it was one thing after another. It was a it was a it was a 
He was having a bombing run, man. He was like, I am going to get your goat before you preach this today. <laughs> but he didn't get it all. Now, in full transparency, did I have to apologize to my wife for being short this morning already? Guess what? I did. I know that makes me human. I get it. But, anyway, I'll leave that alone. So, another definition is to lead astray, to guide in a wrong way or into error, to seduce from truth or rectify, to lead captive, to carry into captivity. That is the only thing the enemy has for you. You're not going to be perfect. There's not a pill you're going to take that just automatically makes you where you have every emotion under wraps. But you can start choosing what you take a bite out of. And if you'll start asking God to help you, he'll show you more and more of these, I believe. Because way before someone gets into fornication, drugs, and alcohol, there was all kinds of the four little D's. There were all kinds of other things that was leading them astray. You know, before someone gets upset with me, a lot of them get upset and they don't ever leave. There was something that they might have even had a, they, they probably even had a half right to be upset about, but they never came and talked to me so we could put it under the blood. They just kept, and, and so the enemy just kept, kept bounding to it so they were completely furious and I, nobody else had a clue what they were so upset over. But to them, that thing was a mountain, man. The Bible says if you have ought, what do you do? You go to your brother. Now most of the time when I see people do this in the body of Christ, it is not done in the right heart. It's what, how they use that term is if they've done me wrong, I get to go assault them. No. With words. Come on, are you with me today? Yes. yes. He said if you got ought, you go to your brother in love and say this is what's bothering me. This is what I'm seeing. Is this the truth or not? Can you help me here? Because things aren't always as you perceive, and they may not, they may do it, may, may be doing things they don't even know themselves. Or that maybe you both took the bait and you need to get to the truth. And that's what it's about. Bringing people back into unity, not having a good shouting match with somebody. And it says, and if they don't steal, then you take them from the two or three brothers. Why? Not because you want to prove you're right, but because their soul is on the line. If they don't change and they fall into those things, they're going to be they're going to be lost. And so now you're contending for their soul, and you're doing it out of love, not out of beating them up. And then it says, if they still don't do it, then you drink them before the whole church. Now it's really a shocking experience. But the whole point is to bring it back. And it says if they still don't do it, it says you turn them away so they may be buffeted. It doesn't say you kick them out of the church and have no communion with them forever and just praise God they're going to get what they deserve. It says, no, you pray for them, your heart breaks because now they've taken themselves out of God's covering and now you've got to turn them over to me. You can't keep trying to help them or fix them, but they're going to be buffeted for a while. Why? So that they will come back to God and recognize where they're at right now. See, when it's done biblically, it all makes sense. But what is leading you? There are small foxes that are tripping us up, and God wants to just pour out his spirit, and we have to learn to start shutting the door at the small foxes. This morning, something led you here. Tomorrow morning, what's going to lead you? Tuesday morning, what's going to lead you? Come on. Jesus. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> to exercise dominion. We're hearing that word a lot, right? So just get this phrase. What leads you dominates you. What leads you dominates you. I'm going to go ahead and say it again. What leads you dominates you. Is there anybody in here this morning that was able to get up today? We'll just get, think the last three days. That's all. 
Anybody the last three days that something didn't frustrate you to no end, at least on the inside? Anybody in here that didn't have that happen? No. Okay, so we're all in the same boat. That's a good boat to be in, right? But I hate to break it to you. You're still going to have things frustrate you. And being frustrated is not a sin. But letting that thing have dominion and lead you away into other things about it is possible. Because what, guess what happens if you start meditating? You go from frustrations to anger. To anger, then you go to being offended. The Bible says an offense is as a millstone around your neck. Right? So now you might as well, you're choking and drowning on this thing. Now you've lost your peace, you've lost your joy, and you don't know really why. I just don't feel, I just don't feel the Lord right now. But it's okay. Just feeling distant from me. I don't know why. Come on. Let's learn to shut the door. These things, I, I really thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to change from these things. That this is the small foxes, but they are major doors that the enemy is using on a continual basis in the body of Christ. Amen. And as for me and my house, we're going to learn to start shutting these doors more and more. Amen. You know? Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh. There's another verse that says it's better to live alone in the desert than with a brawling wife, and it's better to live on a corner rooftop, rooftop than one that's continually nagging. I'm going to get in trouble, all the ladies are looking like, what's he going to say now? <laughs> See, the Bible talks about all these challenging relationship things. It says, well, you need to not be that way. But he didn't say never, that things will never be. He said, when you are, then you need to learn how to walk in love with one another. Yeah. You're not going to be removed from any of these things. You know, everybody likes to then quote Proverbs. They never want to quote those. Two, but then they never want to throw up Proverbs 31, you know, the perfect woman of people. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they say, the man is to love the Love, love his bride as Christ loved the church. I mean, it's unconditional. I do whatever I want, how I want, when I want, you have to love me. Well, it says, wives, respect your husband as you respect the Lord. I'm not respecting that man until he learns. Yeah. <laughs> I am meddling this morning. Man, I'm even sitting down. All of those issues of life are in the Word of God, and it tells you how to deal with them. And they'll teach you how to shut the doors. Oh, I need some scripture. The Bible says that uh, uh, love covers a multitude of sins. It says if you'll love them, you'll heat coals of fire on them. I'll never forget it, boys and girls time in America. I, I, can't, I don't remember her name, but there was a sweet older Greek lady. She was like in her 80s, and she was still working. And man, she made the best baklava I've ever had. And uh, she was originally from Greek, and she, was, she grew up, grew up in an Orthodox Greek church. But she didn't get, I led her to the Lord in her 80s. And, uh, but her and her husband at this time in the relationship is he lived upstairs and she lived downstairs and they didn't talk. And it'd been that way for 20 years. And she just every day would tell me how much she hated her husband. And I'd tell her every day how she needed to love her husband. And she finally, she's like, well, you're going to have to show me how to do that, preacher. I don't even like the guy. I said, well, anyhow, long story short, they, uh, and her, 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 her son was a cop, and he'd have to come over and mediate and get with for him all, all the time. And, uh, but you know, God, he, I'll, I'll say, I'll make the story short. She learned to walk in love, and she could love some of the roughest kids, man. And, I mean, she just had grace and mercy for everybody else with him because she expected better out of him. He'd done things that she didn't approve of. But, you know, I can say they learned to love each other. She went on to be with the Lord now still a long time ago. But, you know, it didn't happen overnight. But that grace and mercy that God showed her, she learned to show that to other people. I know this has been a simple message today, but I believe it's powerful if you get a hold of it. I know it's not how I preached a lot of them. But uh, 
Something's going to lead you today. Why not start praying, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Amen. Lord, Satan's going to tempt me today to act a fool. I don't want to act a fool today, God. Lord, help me to, Lord, I recognize that my mouth gets me in trouble. Lord, help me to guide my mouth that I don't say nothing stupid. Lord, I've got a temper problem. I've seen others in the Word of God have it, and you used it for their good. Lord, help me deliver me from a spirit of anger. Lord, give me a peace and a timid spirit. Come on. These things work. How are you going to get it? The Bible says you have not because you ask not because you ask amiss. The enemy wants to tell you just something you got to live with, and God says, I, I paid a way for you to be free. And if you're have, finding out you're usually blowing up at everybody else, it's time to deal with the real person you're upset with, and that's probably yourself. Amen. Give yourself some grace and mercy. All right, moving on. I'm, I'm trying to hurt. I, I got three minutes. <laughs> Matthew 6, 13 means to bring you to a place. That word lead means to bring you to a place. Well, whoever's leading you is going to bring you to a place. You need to decide what place you want to go. Temptation can also be trial. Sometimes God allows those trials to bring you through to a better place. But there will always be two forces trying to lead you to two separate outcomes of a trial. And you get to decide who you follow. I'm preaching deep this morning, if you're listening. The next part, he says, deliver us. That word deliver means rescue. God has already rescued the whole world. He said, "Be of good. in this world you'll have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. So whatever that thing Satan's tempting you with, that's telling you that's bigger than you are, 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. And he has already delivered you. He's already overcame that thing. You just got to be led by the Spirit of God out of that thing. You know, there's been times, I, I know I've preached this many times to you, there was a season in my life that the Lord was telling me to love somebody that they've done me some terrific harm. I mean, harm. And listen, Paul's talked about that. He said, remember this brother, they did me great harm. You know, he didn't say, oh, I can't talk about those things. He said, no, let me do it out of the right heart and right spirit. But they've done me great harm. And I said, God, I don't know how to love like you're telling me how to love. I just don't have it in me. I'm sorry. I'm trying and I went to him, you know what? He, super, he put a super to my natural. He taught me to love in a supernatural way that freed me up some, from stuff that would still have me in bondage today if I hadn't learned to love that way. But first I had to go. So that sums up today's message. Last week we had a powerful altar service, God moved in a powerful way. And I'll pray for people today, but you know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. If I had my way, I'd get to jump and shout and run every service. I love to preach that way. It just makes my spirit man happy. But you know, sometimes we need to have talks like this so things have time to sink in. And today, when you leave here, you're going to be led away by something. You know, you, you, you people used to back in the day, they'd go have dinner together, they'd roast faster over lunch. <laughs> I pray this now you have for dinner. <laughs> but in all honesty, have you thought of some things in your spirit over the last couple weeks that you recognize have been spoiling some things for you. Some things that how many in here that the people anybody here, let's just be real, you don't raise your hands, but you know, you ever notice really honestly the people closest to you 
they really do know how to get all your buttons. They can get you fired up in just seconds. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you're not careful, have you noticed, I want you to start being conscious of this, how much of your peace you lose during that season. news is, is we become aware and we start closing those doors. And you know, I may never get, I, 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 I may never get to the place where I've perfected all those things, but I never stop trying to perfect them. And do you know what I found is that, I'm going to be honest, if I went, not, it doesn't happen like it used to, I've been aware of a lot of this for a while, but again, this fresh revelation, when I let those things affect me, at no time anymore, it used to take me months and days and weeks to get over those things. Now it's usually minutes still. But even during those minutes, I have no peace. I have no nothing until I repent, get under the blood. But, uh, you know, I'm not myself when those things are influencing me. I'm not the Pastor Brian that everybody needs. And so the enemy would love to keep me all twisted up if he could. Do you know there's things in you that this world needs? There's things that your loved ones around you need that at the end can keep you twisted up. They're not going to get to you. They may be going through a horrible day where they just need somebody to smile and say, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. But instead, you were going through a horrible day too, and that's all right. And so instead, you the, the Bible says, right in James, it says railing each other devours each other. You're just chewing each other up and spitting it out. Saves up there just like, I love it, Dad. I got to go ahead, Dad. It's great. Yeah. I didn't even have to say nothing. Yeah. That's why you're killed. <laughs> but you can have peace and you can have joy. James 5, James 5, 13 says, if it was all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But he says, whose mind is stayed on him, he will keep that perfect Amen. You want to learn how to do it? I can see if you if you're looking for one verse for today, look, learn to keep your mind on him. If something comes up in your mind, it's trying to when it's trying to alleviate itself above Christ, it says have the mind of Christ. That thing is trying to dominate you. And now if you're not careful, you'll be serving it instead of serving Christ. Y'all still here? Anybody in here, I, this is, don't raise your hand. Anybody ever had a demonic assault on your mind? Or it just comes in like a flood? But see, what the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises a, stand, raises a standard up against it. But if you don't know that, it's a very crazy feeling to hear you have your mind. But if you don't know how any of the words I've taught, you've not done those things, and you're here today, and you're just learning this, and don't want to tell you something. The, Bible, the, the name of Jesus makes the demons tremble. And if you don't know how to say anything else, just go, Jesus! And I promise you, he will flee. And we'll teach you more as you go along. But some of you today, you just need that. If you, I don't care if you think it looks crazy. If you're starting to bite the blood, you're at work, you don't have to scream that loud. <laughs> you know? But, Jesus! Help! I promise you, he will be there. And as you learn more of the word, you'll learn to apply more of the word to those things. But, just know that he's got good things for you. Come on, he says, I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper and give you life in the future. But they're his plans. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. All right, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to close this up today? Still feel you're here today and moving. Um, I hear him tell me to do something, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I'm still uh, processing it myself, but I'm going to be obedient. He told me to repent of all the times I've opened the door and let the little foxes spoil the vine. 
And so we're going to do that this morning. If you feel led, you can join me. I'm going to pray. Now listen, the enemy's a deceiver. And he'd, he'd like you to say, well, if you're repenting, then you did it. Well, yeah, you opened the door. But see, by you repenting that, I want you to remember that repentance is the gateway to freedom. So once you put blood on all those things, he no longer has authority over all those doorways that you opened and now they're closed. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that means when you leave here today, you have a fresh start. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to pray that together. That'd be all right. Y'all can just repeat after me. Before we do that, is there anybody here today? Different service? How many know we don't have the same service around here? And I preach different every service. Don't try yeah. me. We just let them. But if you're not here, if you're here today, and if you. I don't like turning it this way because it's not about the prayer. It's about making God Lord of your life. But if you know you're not saved, you know that you're not going to make heaven, or you know you need to get right with God, whatever terminology that the Spirit of God is speaking to you right now, I want to give you authority to make Jesus Lord of your life. That means he washes you clean of all your sins, and you say he's taking the lead role. If there's anybody here today, you just raise your hand. We'll pray. See that hand? See that hand? I see that hand. Praise God. All right. Hey, see, amen. I see that. Now listen, we're going to get, some of you, we're going to get the pot clean for the first time. Sometime it's going to, we're going to get the pot clean. But let, listen, let's, let's keep it clean. Because yeah. why? I'm going to tell you, it's very serious. I'm not trying to scare you. The enemy used to use this to keep me from getting right with God. And so I'm going to try to diffuse that too. The Bible says that when you leave today, well, right now we're going to pray. You're going to get totally cleaned out. And the Bible says the enemy will come back. To see if anybody's in the house. You need to make sure that Jesus is still in the house. Amen. Otherwise, it says he gets seven more demons. More than him. Him and his brother and his sister move in and they really start tearing up down. You don't want that. Now, I used to not get right. I ain't strong enough to stay right. Guess what? You're not strong enough to stay right. But the Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So you can stay right because who's in you? Amen. 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 All right, let's pray. First, we want to get some people saved, and then we're going to pray the other. What a great day. Jesus, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross with me on your mind. I believe you went down to heaven and went saved and rose again on the third day so that I could be free. And I ask you to wash me clean of all my sins. And I come out of agreement with everything that's not from God. And today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Now, Lord, I come before you right now. Lord, I thank you for those that acknowledge that you're their king and they made you Lord of their life. And uh, say you heard them. They come out of agreement with everything that's not of God or from God. Lord, as pastor, I say those strongholds must break right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I lose the love and the peace of God over them right now. Lord, just waves of mercy and grace be pulled in. Lord. And Holy Spirit, they said, come in and clean house. Lord, right now, clean house. Lord, fill them up. He shot out of the little old suit. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, there's, there's angels in heaven. 10,000 angels having a party. Going, whoo, they made it all, yes! <laughs> and for those of the rest of us, I'm just going to leave this from what I heard in my spirit. You just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father. <laughs> I come out of agreement with all the small foxes that I've been letting in. And I ask you to forgive me and wash me clean. And I take back an illegal contract I've given the enemy. And I thank you for the freedom. I now, I now have today. today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
Man, y'all feel the peace of God just flooded here? Uh, we didn't have a shout and dine, but that's the glory of God. That's his manifest presence. Glory. And so, you know, I'm not one of the pastors that says we're having a 40-part series or whatever, not because I have anything against them. It's just God doesn't give me something that you all need every Sunday. So I don't know. Maybe we'll continue on the series on Lead Me Not Into Temptation. But uh, either way, we're going to have what God has for us. We have all kinds of great classes coming up. I really encourage you to partake of these things. They're for you. I, 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 we do them to help people, to encourage them, to strengthen their beliefs. It's not like there's not a, a test at the end where it's pass or fail. It's just about giving you knowledge so that you can make it. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, so thankful you're here. I'm going to have deaconess come up today and uh, take prayer requests. And uh, amen. Um, and by the way, Jason, I'll tell you, I'm really happy y'all made it today. It was, God has got great things in store for Broken James Church. And, uh, and, for the record, I know some of you noticed, and it's not why I sat. God sometimes wants me to, when I sit and speak, it's easier. I, I do more teaching, more daddy talking. But uh, my spirit man is full, and yes, I'm a little tired, and so I'm going to try to recuperate. I've had a busy weekend, and, and I, I am repenting. I've been overdoing it again, and I'm going to just try to slow down again to give my body still time to heal. Amen. But I'm thankful because uh, I ain't in a wheelchair. I'm not on a cane. We took this property over a year and two months ago. I couldn't even walk up the steps without a cane and without sitting. And uh, God done all, has done all those things. And they told me I would never walk and yada, yada, yada. So, you know, but that doesn't mean that you still don't have to fight. And we've seen miracle after miracle around here. Amen. And we're going to continue to see them, not because of who we are, but because of who our God is. Amen. 